In previous video, we discussed about speed and velocity. In this video, I am going to talk about acceleration. Acceleration. Okay. Now, we just learned the concept of velocity. That is, velocity is defined as speed defined along with its uh, direction. That is what we call velocity. Now, suppose you are going in a car and you are traveling on some flat highway or some expressway. And you are traveling in some magenta colored car. This is your car. Okay. And there is some another car ahead of you. Whatever. Now I'm sorry, my car really does not appear to be like car, but just for a while, imagine that those are the cars. And this is your car. And this is some other car. And you get some weird idea. You decide to overtake this car. You decide to overtake this car. So what you will need to do is, you will need to boost your speed up. You need to increase the speed such that your speed is more than speed of this car so that you can overtake it. So if you are currently traveling at some velocity, say 20 km per hour, and this car is supposed traveling at say 30 km per hour. Now to to overtake this car, you would need to increase your speed from 20 to say if you want to at least you need to increase your speed till 31 km per hour so that you can overtake this. But if you want to overtake that car with a zap. Uh, that is with extreme speed. You may like to increase your speed till 60 km per hour. As I just said, this is an express vehicle, so you can safely travel at that speed. Anyways, this is just for you to imagine while you are actually driving. Just take some basic cautions. Anyways, so let us focus on acceleration. So, this was your initial speed, and I, we will denote the initial speed as u, that is the speed be before you provide the acceleration and this is your final speed and we will denote it with V and this is your final speed after acceleration so the process of increasing the speed is acceleration this is what we can conclude from this uh, example now this is how a normal human being would understand the concept of acceleration but when we talk about physics we need to get far more precise so let us define the acceleration in terms of physics. Acceleration is defined as change in now I would wish to change the color velocity. Change in velocity. unit time mathematically we can represent it uh, we can represent acceleration as a is equal to change in velocity uh, change in velocity upon time okay now what is change in velocity again it is important to understand the concept of change in any quantity change in any quantity is defined as difference between the final quantity and the initial quantity so what was the initial ve uh, final velocity final ve velocity is v now what is the initial velocity it is u so we will always take change in velocity as final velocity minus initial velocity upon time v minus u upon t you can never write it as u minus v upon t that is you can never take it as initial minus final it, ha it has always to be 
final minus initial velocity. Now, accordingly, if we substitute the values from here, V is 60, U is 20, and what is this time? The time is time taken to increase the speed from 20 km to 60 km. And let us say the time is 5 seconds. 5 seconds. You just took it just took you 5 seconds to increase the speed from 20 to 60. Then this would be 5 seconds and you will have to convert the seconds into hours. So you will divide it by 3600. So it will be 40 into 3600 upon 5. 5 is a 4 8 and this is your acceleration. This is acceleration in kilometer per hour square and that's why the value is so big. Now let us take some another example where values are a bit small. Usually you won't encounter such big uh, values while calculating your sums because usually data would be given in meter per second as far as acceleration thing is concerned. So if your initial speed u is say 10 meter per second, you increase the speed to 20 meter per second and you take time to do this uh, is 5 seconds then the acceleration would be final minus initial upon time that is 10 by 5 and that is 2 meters per second square this is the unit of acceleration and how we came to this unit we will understand this once we understand this acceleration thing now in both the cases we, are, we saw that the speed has been increased from initial velocity to final velocity. Now what if the speed has decreased? Say you are traveling on a, again you are traveling on some straight road at say 30 kilometers per hour or sorry yeah 30 kilometers per hour or let us consider this in uh, meter per second only, 30 meter per second. The units depend on you. I mean, it can be 30 kilometer per hour or it can be 30 meter per second, whatever. Now, usually cars uh, traveling at 30 meter per second is a relatively safe speed. But once you see a bump over here, there is some bump or speed breaker. This is speed breaker. This is a speed breaker. So you need to reduce your speed, and when you reach at this point, it should be relatively safe speed. Let us say 5 meter per second. So what has happened is the initial velocity u was 30 meter per second, final velocity is 5 meter per second, and so the change in velocity, acceleration change in velocity will be 5 minus 30 and suppose time taken to do this is a 5 seconds then it would be minus 25 upon 5 which is minus 5 meter per second square what does this negative sign indicates it is a concept of negative acceleration we can also call it retardation or deceleration so negative acceleration is also called retardation or deceleration but basically at times people use the word acceleration to denote retardation or deceleration also so acceleration can be positive as well as negative one more thing when we define the term acceleration we say change in velocity so this is a velocity this difference is a difference in velocity and velocity is a vector quantity and hence acceleration is also a vector. Acceleration is also a vector quantity so whenever we define acceleration we need to give its direction also just like we discussed in case of velocity. Okay so 
that is it now let us talk about unit see this is change in velocity and unit of velocity is meter per second and this is time so it would be second and hence our unit of acceleration is meter per second square that's simple a basic algebra that you need to do over the units so that's it yet that is yet another thing now we will talk about when let me just erase these things for a while when can we say that the body is undergoing acceleration when can we say that body has undergone acceleration see there are various instances first when speed increases yes when speed increases then there will be some change in uh, speed or velocity because as speed increases velocity has to increase because they are just the same things the only difference is speed is scalar whereas velocity is a vector similarly when speed decreases this is yet another thing third when direction of motion changes this one is important that is if you are traveling in a straight line at a uniform speed and you suddenly took the turn in this direction at the same speed so if the initial velocity was u and the final velocity is u that is still your velocity is remaining the same but if your direction has changed the magnitude of velocity is the same but if the direction has changed then we still can call that the body has undergone the acceleration now I'm sure one would like to ask a big why on this thing. That why, if simply if there is simply a change in direction, how can we say that body has undergone acceleration? That is because the, when we define acceleration, we said that it is a change in velocity. So when the direction of the body changes, direction of the motion of the body changes, it is indeed undergoing the change in velocity, and hence acceleration itself. When body changes a direction we call it as acceleration now to get in depth about this concept we need to understand the concept of force and the important equation that Newton has given F is equal to M A so whenever whenever any mass undergoes any acceleration there is some external force that acts on it which produces that acceleration so we and this change in direction is not possible by itself there has to be some external force that acts on the body to change the direction of the body so some force would be acting on some mass and hence some acceleration would surely be produced and hence we say that even if simply there is a change in direction it has undergone the acceleration we will talk about this when we will derive this equation in the chapter of force but currently just for a while believe that even if the acceleration uh, direction of the body changes the body is undergoing acceleration so these were the few instances when we can say that body is undergoing acceleration now the next concept we would talk about is uniform acceleration if if the change in velocity of a body moving over a straight line is equal for some equal intervals of time then such a motion is called uniformly accelerated motion that is if the initial velocity at this point is zero that is the body is at rest then it increases to 2 meter per second the velocity became 2 meter per second uh, after one second then after second second that is up two seconds it become four meter per second then it becomes six meter per second then it becomes 
8 meter per second and the time is first second 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 third second and fourth second so in the equal interval of time that is in one second it becomes 2 kilometer then in next one second it becomes 4 then next one week second it becomes 6 and next one second it becomes 8 and such motion is called uniformly accelerated motion but the important thing to note is the motion has to be over the straight line because again if the motion is over some curved path or it is over some path like this what would happen is at this point or in case of curve at each and every point the direction of the body would be changing if direction is changing then acceleration can't be said as uniform because uniform is constant it does not change but if direction changes acceleration is said to be changed that is because uh, at each point the direction would be changing so it can't be uniform so this is why uniform acceleration always happens for a straight line let us say uh, the example can be of a freely falling body it undergoes acceleration at uh, g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square so at each second the acceleration would be 9.8 meter per second square now this is the concept of freely falling body which is a great example of uniform acceleration now the example of a non-uniform non-uniform acceleration what is non-uniform acceleration that is it's just opposite of this in the given interval of time if the change in acceleration if the acceleration is not uh, same for each interval of time. So let us say initially it is at rest, then it becomes 2 meter per second square. Um, speed becomes 2 meter per second. That is, uh, then for the next second it becomes 6 meter per second. Then suddenly it becomes uh, 4 meter per second. So here you can see that initially the speed has increased then again it has increased but here it has increased by 2 units whereas here it has increased by 3 units sorry 4 units it's increased by 4 units and further again it has decreased by 2 units so the motion is not uniform it is un undergoing deflections and such motion is called non-uniform accelerated motion so this was all about uniform acceleration and non-uniform acceleration and now once we know the concept of every uh, initial speed or initial velocity and final velocity we can determine we can determine average velocity average velocity while I discussed the average velocity in my previous video I just said that it is a bit difficult to define it but for some special case that is when a body is undergoing uniform acceleration we can define the average velocity like this average velocity is equal to initial velocity plus final velocity by 2 this relation would would hold true for uniformly acceleration motion so that was all about acceleration uh, thank you